So many cup and welcome to another episode here for the fun report. Mindful media and communication. No, I messed up the intro. I should have said it's time for another episode here for the Funky Pod. Reigning, defending, world, heavy crew, middle, welterweight, podcast, champion of the world. <laughs> you get the idea. So we're talking about the UFC, obviously, and I apologize to Bruce Buffer for this terrible impersonation of his. Nobody's coming close to Bruce, obviously. Not even his brother, as we've seen with the boxing. But yeah, so no offense to Bruce Buffer, I apologize. Let's uh, let's jump into the podcast, though. Okay, so we are trying today to well talk about what just happened with the UFC and with the newest, latest, biggest sponsorship deal ever. And we're trying to look at it from a media slash communication theories point of view. From a business slash money point of view, it's easy. Here are $100 million. Do you want it? Yes. Okay. That, that Maybe I should do a business podcast. That was the business part of the, of the podcast. Okay. Why does the UFC partner with uh, Bud Light? $100 million. Okay. Okay. So we got this out of the way. Let's talk about it from a media point of view. All right. So maybe it's going to be a quick one, um, I think, because I think most of us Remember what happened a few months back with Bud Light, right? Bud Light got dragged through the mud. And not only Bud, right? Like, not only Bud Light, but all the other brands around Bud and anything Anheuser-Busch was, was doing, I think, got dragged, though the parent company, right, got dragged through the mud. Um, when they featured the trans influence, and I had to write it down because I'm sorry, I'm just not familiar with her. Um, Dylan Mulvaney, right? Yeah, so Dylan Mulvaney was like in this ad, like celebrating, I know, a year of womanhood or whatever and had like her face. And by the way, I didn't mean to to be like condescending by, by um, I don't know, hesitating. I really had to think if she transitioned to him or he transitioned into her. So he transitioned into her, right? Because I remember celebrating womanhood. Okay, so Dylan Mulvaney celebrated womanhood. Um, I think one year of womanhood and then had, had her face on the Bud Light can, right? I was like happy about it. And this was like a whole, supposed to be like a viral campaign, I guess, a viral vogue campaign. Um, but, the, <laughs> but, <laughs> but the Bud Light audience did not take to that very kindly, I, I want to say. And I'm, I'm definitely not going to go the, the, the way that like lots of other outlets went, like, oh, the transphobic trolls and stuff like this. I think that's not the case. Oh, God, saying this now gets me into trouble again with my Vogue friends. But I think Joe Rogan actually make, made a decent point. He's like, it's not transphobic. It's just like people who bite butt light, they don't want to think about wokeness, political correctness, and all those things. They're like, just let me enjoy my beer and don't push any agenda, whatever agenda that might be, right? I, I, I just think that now that I agree with Joe Rogan, my, some of my friends are going to hate me again. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, but then, I mean, lots of people that came out today, they bashed Bud Light for promoting like Vogue values and being too PC. And, and then, of course, they turn around, right? And then the audience was like, okay, if you're pushing agendas onto us, then we're just not buying you anymore. And then those pictures and videos of like everything being empty in a supermarket, but just Bud Light being still in the fridge, like being available because no one's buying it or all other Anheuser-Busch products not being bought, for example. And like I said, Joe Rogan made a point about it. Um, other celebrities made, made several um, points about it. Kid Rock, <laughs> you remember that one? Kid Rock, he took an automated, automatic rifle, I believe, and was shooting at Bud Light um, uh, cans in his estate, of course, not, not randomly, but like in his estate, he just was just shooting at the Bud Light cans, which is, of course, also a great commercial that you don't want to have about your brand, Kid Rock shooting at you. And the thing is, I, I just think, and what others thought too, that Kid Rock fit, or was like representing the, the audience, the target audience of Bud Light very well in this case. And if you look into it, you know that Kid Rock, of course, isn't the average working class American, even though he wants to like come across as one of those. Um, he, he grew up very rich, apparently. Um, but the way he behaves, the way he represents himself, so he, like the average American is like, yeah, 
says the non-American. <laughs> but let's not make it like a nationalistic thing. But I, so back to like Kid Rock reacted like lots of um, Bud Light I said fans, consumers reacted, right? Like just get the stuff, get your agenda away from me. I just want to enjoy my beer. So then Bud Light eventually, of course, pulled the ad. They kind of apologized, kind of. Like they said we didn't mean to push an agenda, just wanted to like celebrate trans rights and, and whatnot. Um, and then afterwards, they came out with this, with this ridiculous commercial, commercial, right? Oh, you, have to, you have to check it out. If you're w watching this podcast on YouTube, just type it in. If not, go to YouTube, find it. Uh, like Bud Light commercial 2023, you're probably going to see, but like horse and like a, a wild horse, American flag. There must be, an, I don't remember, but there must be an eagle in there somewhere too. Probably someone shooting guns too. I don't know. Uh, like the, the ultra American advertising. Like it's like a parody actually. Like you're like, are you really doing this right now? <laughs> it's ridiculous. So they came out with this ad, right? For like, for like Budweiser, like Budweiser, the beer of history and whatnot. What um, didn't work. People took, the piss out of it because it was so obvious what they're doing it's like okay you effed up here with your audience and now you're trying to make up with another like ad that goes the complete opposite now um and just over the top like super macho american um didn't work of course <laughs> everyone was making fun of it right so now but is still there like but light is still like in a place where everyone hates it i was like okay what are we gonna do now well we tried the super american like advertisement over the top that people perceived as parody and they didn't take it serious so what else can we do to to kind of connect to our audience and that hurts me a little bit because i'm a huge mixed martial arts fan i mean i i train every day so i would say like i'm a hobby mixed martial artist probably because i'm not fighting professionally obviously but so but goes like well <laughs> those people who like fights let's let's target them and that's what they're doing right now right they target people who love the ufc the ufc fan base like yeah ufc had a beer sponsor anyone and anyways um and as soon as i say ufc and beer you say modelo brought for those or brewed for those of the fighting spirit right uh, i will miss john annick saying this <laughs> um so now the new beer sponsor is not modelo anymore It is, but Bud Light is now the new UFC beer sponsor again for $100 million, right? That's some crazy flip-flopping from being like the super Vogue brand to now being the super, yeah, and I know, and I'm exaggerating, right? Of course, women are fighting in the UFC, which is great. Some of the best fighters are female fighters in the UFC. Of course, women are watching the UFC. Some of the, some of the best UFC interviews fighter interviews content mma content out there is by made by women by by nina nina dramas te terrible youtube name but i mean congrats to all the success ridiculous uh, she's doing great right now and um, helen Yi is doing great right now uh, so yeah of course women are welcome in mma but but is trying to do this like yeah we're all macho Ooh, yeah let's go um thing right now and that that's why they are like signing with the ufc and that's why they're throwing all the money at the ufc right just to do like the complete the complete turnaround here um so if you, if you look at it it's, it seems a bit hypercritical right Like, if you look at, like, cognitive dissonance theory here, um, yeah, but Light tried to appeal to the progressive folks for a while and see how I say folks with, with, with the, the, the pro-trans rights ad. But now they're closing up to, like, what is perceived by many as like, this hyper-macho UFC thing. And again, I'm not saying it is. I'm just looking at the perceptions, okay? Again, fight fan right here. God, I feel like I, I'm going to stop, like, explaining myself now okay so um yeah closing up to the ufc was my last point that i tried to try to make so it's kind of like a pick a lane but pick a lane like are you super super woke or are you like yeah just bleed right so if you know the reference good on you if not i'm not going to explain it google it google just bleed just bleed ufc If you look a little bit deeper through the lens of like media psychology, right, we can see how this actually makes strategic sense, though. You don't need to pick a lane, to be honest, because if you look at it from media theory point of view, it makes sense, like I just said, right? So according to like, for example, cultivation theory, we talked about this before in the pod, brands use those media partnerships to intentionally, obviously, cultivate a desired image. 
yeah, no surprise here, right? So from that, oh, you're like this woke BS, whatever, now to like, okay, we're standing for like, because the UFC is all about like freedom of speech and do what you want, right? Hey, and again, I follow the UFC. So, uh, so that's not what Bud is trying to cultivate, that, that, that image, right? That they stand for those, that they stand for what the UFC stands for, okay? So Bud Light is cultivating that brand identity linked to strength, intensity, and this you know, masculinity fighting spirit, like just like Modelo. <laughs> and then there's the indication deck technique, like that's intended to transfer the audience feelings about the UFC onto Bud Light. That's, that's the main reason, okay? So while the UFC controls up like association with toughness, being alpha and so on, Bud Lights wants beer drinkers to feel the same associations when they look at Bud. It's like, you look at the UFC, you look at Bud, like, okay, same thing, okay? That's why it's a clever move. I'm criticizing it, or I criticized it earlier in the pod, because it's so obvious. <laughs> but theoretically speaking, it does make sense. And they also very intelligently actually use the framing theory to now reposition themselves after the backlash, right? So sponsoring the UFC helps to reframe but light as on like unpolitically correct, non-PC, no BS kind of beer. Okay, so the, it distances them from like those accusations of being too woke after the whole Dylan Mulvaney thing, okay? Even though it led to lots of funny memes once it was announced, to be honest, non-PC memes. Um, we could also look at the, the agenda setting theory. Right? Bud Light wants to dictate the narrative and issues the, the public associates with them. Okay, so partnering with the UFC promotes like talk about Bud Light's alignment with UFC culture rather than the continued debate over the wokeness things. So now people talk about Bud Light and the UFC rather than that wokeness campaign they had earlier. Right? Smart. So distracting basically with a hundred million dollars. And if you look at like it objectively through those communication theories, we can see how that UFC sponsorship allows Bud Light to kind of reinvent itself without uh, compromising the integrity of the UFC's branding. Because the UFC is like this standalone, this big entity anyways, right? So Bud Light caters to like a wider range of demographics while UFC maintains like its hardcore fight fan following. So the sponsorship gives both organizations what they want, money and the connection to like that strong brand. Okay, it's, it's a win-win basically. So while it's, it's quite easy to see like as a butler, as butler like flip-flopping around, like the, the communication theories here actually show how the UFC deal makes strategic sense. I mean, that's why they did it. They, even, it might look like it, but they're not stupid <laughs> they're over there at Anheuser-Busch, right? They're just smart people there at Bud. So Bud Light is able to frame themselves as a beautiful UFC-loving, I almost said bros, but I mean loving fans, <laughs> while like sidestepping the accusations of abandoning, abandoning their Vogue campaign. Yeah, so, so socially conscious folks may may raise their eyebrows like, oh, what are you doing there? You can't deny it's actually the, the smart and right thing to do right now. So if the beer sponsorship is up with the UFC, but they have beer sponsorships, they have free hydration, drink sponsorships, they have whatever. whatever. Um, so it's, it's, it's smart, right? Um, yeah, well, well done. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty brilliant branding BJJ. <laughs> there you go. Um, that, that's all I have to say about this though. Like I don't want to drag on too much um, about like branding because I mean every marketing director for any brand anywhere should know all those things so that, that's why it's actually so surprising that they stepped into like the disaster when it happened because everyone should have been able to tell you that that's going to happen so now that they're like trying to cost correct now it all makes sense. Okay, so what I do now makes sense. That wokeness ad campaign didn't make much sense. Um, if you know your audience. And this is the first thing I also tell my students. It's like in every single class, I think, from the first to the last year, we always talk about who's your audience. And then, of course, depending on the year you're in, we're like getting into more detail, into more depth, into like more specifics, how to find the right audio audience and how to communicate with them and how to message them and blah, blah. But even, even in the first year, yeah, where you just learn like general stuff even there we're like okay yeah we're not going to do much detail but 
who's your audience? Who is it for? Like, what are you, why are you doing this for? And define your audience. And if Bud would have known the audience, they would have never, they should have never ran with that, with that ad in the beginning. So now they're course correcting, it all makes sense. And that, that's my take for now. So let's pause here for a second. Let's breathe in some compassion for everyone. <laughs> See, I'm trying to like to to like bring it all together in the end and make us all happy. <laughs> yeah, um, every every everyone gets everyone drinks. Everyone is compassionate, right? Like the trans community, the UFC fans, and like even the marketing people at Bud Light. Like you finally cost corrected. Congratulations! Yeah, everyone's just trying to to thrive in this this complex world. If you're honest, right? So for now, I'm gonna sip some oat milk. Almond milk? <laughs> what am I allowed to drink now? <laughs> I'm gonna order an avocado sandwich now and gonna try to recenter me being mindful. <laughs> and I'm cancelled. Um, yeah, so let this let this intriguing like case be a lesson in seeing things from multiple perspectives. I hope it this shit made sense to some extent. And well <laughs> peace. <laughs> can, can I can I do it without laughing? Peace and Cosmic blessings, blessings to everyone. <laughs> okay, I try to be in PC, it's not working. I'll see you for a non-PC Funky Pod next week. Until then, stay safe, take care. Like, share, subscribe. We talk next week. Don't drink and drive. Saudi Cup.